Welcome to Clarity. Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to back up your DNA Center server. So whether you've got a standalone node or a three node HA cluster, I always recommend taking external backups. The initial configuration of DNA Center takes a lot of work to building your hierarchy, loading your floor maps, setting all of your uh, devices and discovering everything. It's work that you don't want to do again. So I always recommend one of the first things that you do once you get your DNA Center set up is get the external backups working. So for this case, we're going to use the DNA Center administration guide to get this backup set up. But I had a very good conversation with Kevin McKenzie earlier today, and I'm going to go ahead and also show how you can use just any NFS service that's running. So when you go to your infrastructure guys asking for an Ubuntu server for the backup, maybe instead you ask them, hey, are you guys currently using NFS for your file share for storage? And instead, maybe can you get an account on that NFS and a partition made? And then you can back it up to a more enterprise solution versus downloading an Ubuntu server and having your infrastructure guys build you a VM. So we'll go ahead and we'll go over both of them and kind of show you how it's done. So at first, though, here's the Ubuntu server that we downloaded. So in this one, I've already got the account set up. And as Kevin would be able to attest from the conversation earlier today, I am absolutely terrible at Linux. So here's a configuration guide that I'm going to be following. It's the uh, administration guide. I'm going to link to this below. But we're essentially just going to roll through this with one small caveat, which is where Kevin was able to help me so much. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we're up to date. And then we need to install the NFS service. And then here we're going to make the directory that we're going to back uh, DNA Center up to. So now you could name this whatever you want. Uh, it's totally up to you. I'm just following the config guide. The only real caveat that you need to know here is that regardless of the directory that you make it, you can only nest it about three directories deep. In this case, if I had like a DNA Center and then like a backup, Right, that's four directories deep. This will fail in DNA Center. So you really just want to have it short of a directory path as possible. No more than three. Otherwise, you'll start getting an error when you try to connect to the file share. So I'm just following the config guide, but you could name this, you know, DNA, DNA, C, C, you know, whatever you want, right? But, uh, you know, if you change it, just make sure that you keep that change consistent throughout the rest of the instructions. But this is the directory that we're going to go ahead and create. Now, this is where I got messed up before. So we're, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to fix this now. This is not in the config guide. Uh, so what this did was is, um, and Kevin explained this way better than I did. I'm about to, but it essentially, there's privileges for the owner the group and everyone so seven being the the highest elevation of privileges so we essentially said that the owner can do whatever they want to the file structure 
the group can only do like I think five is stands for executing, um, and then uh, seven. So everyone can have full permissions to this particular uh, folder. Um, this um, is what was this... messing me up for many many hours when I tried to join DNA Center to the NFS share. So this is not in the administration guide but make sure that you do that command so that way you go ahead and everything works from there we need to now edit this text file and in order to do that you're going to hit i right for insert so that way you can actually make changes and then you're just going to follow the instructions All right, um, let's try and add this. So those IP addresses, one is the IP address of my VIP. The other is the actual IP address of my DNA server. I don't remember which, so that's why I added both. But when you're doing this for your production, you're going to just add the IP address of your DNA appliances. So if you've got three in a cluster, you're just going to add all three of your appliance IPs in here and don't worry about the VIP. All right, and so after you hit I, so that way you can go ahead and make the edit and you input what's in the admin guide, you'll go ahead and you'll hit escape to break that. And then you'll hit shift ZZ, so that way you save it. Um, and then if you hit up again, right, you can go ahead and you can see that that did take and you can hit control Z uh, to get back out of there. So after we did that, we'll keep going on the config guide. And then we're going to start the service. So now that we've got the service started, we're going to go back over to DNA Center. And this is actually one of the easier things to do is you'll go to Systems and then Backup and Restore. Then we've got to configure the information so you're going to put the IP address of your Ubuntu server and then SSH is port 22 and then the path is whatever path that you would set and then whatever username that you've got set up uh, on your Ubuntu server the passphrase is just when you go to restore this backup information, it's going to ask you for the passphrase. So just make sure that you remember whatever this is, write it down somewhere, or use something that you've got standard. But when you go to do the restore, if you don't have this, you're not going to be able to do the restore. So if we did everything right, we'll click apply and hopefully we'll get a green checkbox. And that was beautiful. So, and then the last thing that you got to do is, once again, you're going to put the host, which is your uh, Ubuntu server, and the path. All right, so we're now successful. So the uh, only two ads, and I'll make sure that I throw this into the description below. Um, when you're tying it to the Ubuntu server is the uh, chmod 757 on the file uh, directory and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to add um, the IP addresses of your DNA servers and then uh, no root squash as the option um, and again I'll, I'll include both of these edits in the description below so that way you can just add them to the steps in the configuration guide and hopefully you'll have this successful once uh once that is done you can go ahead and you can actually configure your backup and then you can back up all of your data or you can back up your data without assurance this is totally up to you so the only thing that you lose when you back up without the assurance data is that uh, a lot of your ai analytics that your baselines over time 
uh, those will have to get rebuilt. So it'll set you back probably about two weeks of production traffic. But overall, if storage is a concern, space is a concern, without the assurance data is a lot smaller. So we'll do uh, DNA C, no. It's because I don't have a ton of disk space. Uh, oh, it doesn't like my dashes. So we'll put underline. It doesn't like that either. So DNA, no. Assurance. Only lowercase letters. Helps if I read. There we go. And we'll go ahead and we'll create this backup. And we're just going to run this real fast just so that way I can show you guys how large uh, the backup is without assurance. Um, I would back it up with assurance data, but this is my lab DNA center. So I, I actually don't have a lot of assurance data because the lab's been off for a while. But this will give you an idea of what to expect, at least for the, the backup itself. So that, that'll include your inventory, your site hierarchy, your templates, things like that. A everything but the information um, in the assurance engine. All right, so as we can see, the backup has been successful. Let's go take a look and see. Oh, it tells you right here. So just over a gig, so 1.1 gig. So not too bad. And then that was just the first backup. So that way it was a nice test, made sure everything worked well. And then you definitely want to come in here and you want to schedule your backups. So, uh, you know, whenever it's not uh, during production time, so where you're not throwing a gig of data across the network for no reason, uh, you can select all data or data without assurance and then name it. And then you can just set your schedule. And there you go. I also wanted to go ahead and take a quick second to show you what it would look like uh, going to like a NS NFS for like a share drive. So at the house I'm running Synology and we can just go into the file services. So we're just gonna run this as default So we'll turn on NFS and then we really just need to create a folder uh, for it and allow it to be shared. So in this case, this will be, um, you know, DNA C backup. And then we're not going to worry about encrypting it. And then do, 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 do. So we'll just go ahead and we'll just use up my admin credentials, but I would, I could build an account. Um, for DNA Center and just the same, have it be able to do uh, that. And so let's go take a look and let's see if we can't make this happen. So we will remove these because this is the only one that we care about because we're not backing up the assurance data. So I had to enable a uh, secure FTP because I was using port 22 and apparently I need to enable resync. So enable NFS, enable SFTP and enable resync. Ah, here we go. Helps if I get the right location. So we'll throw that in there. Then like fifth times the charm. All right, so there we go. So instead of spinning up an Ubuntu server, if we wanted to, or if your infrastructure guys already have, so and there you go. So if your infrastructure guys already have NFS running in their file share solution, instead of spinning up a whole other server that you have to maintain, you can just go ahead and leverage their existing enterprise infrastructure, get an appropriate account, and then you can just back up straight to that and that's it. So a lot easier than spinning up a whole new server. So I know that that's not explicitly uh, listed in the backup configuration guide, but in my experience, I find using enterprise solutions probably a little better that's already included in the backup. So it's one less server that you have to try and monitor and maintain. But that being said, the Ubuntu solution also works. 
just with those those couple caveats that I'll include below. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.